What up? This is Caroline with the CWC podcast, where we believe that life without your favorite foods is not worth living. I'm going to be talking a lot about my journey to food freedom. And of course, I will always keep it real by sharing the good, the bad, and of course, the ugly. Welcome back. We are on episode four. Holy shit. (laughs) I've spent the last half hour getting my lights set up and I have my overhead lights on today. So trying to mess with like all of this without my production guy is difficult, (laughs) but I got all my lights set up. Um, I got my camera, I think put on the right setting. Here's hoping (laughs) we're going to get started. Um, today, Today's episode, I've totally been going out of order. So I have like that whole list. I talk to you guys every week. I have like my bullet point list of things that I was gonna like try to follow. And of course that's like, I'm still gonna use it, but it's like things have come up that I wanna talk about right now. So today's episode is gonna be about my boobs really. (laughs) It is though. So I have breast implants and I have decided to get them removed and I'm going to be talking all about that. I'm going to talk about the whole process from start to finish. Um, I made a post the other day about like my decision to get them taken out and it was insane how many women reached out to me. Like I've never had that much response from a post ever. Um, there was like 200 comments and my inbox was full. I'm still like going through DMs from girls telling me either their story of having theirs explanted or I'm talking to women who currently have them in and they are experienced. We're sharing like, what symptoms do you have? What, you know, so I, I think I just, okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna start at the beginning and go from there because I don't want this to get jumbled if I start from the end. So, you know, when I was in my twenties, like I I've always been flat chested. And when I say flat chested, like a lot of girls are like, Oh, I had small boobs before. No, you were like a B. I was like a double A. (laughs) When I say double A, like I'm talking like this desk, like flat is a fucking board. And So I always wanted boobs, always. Like that was, why does that shit? Okay, I need to stop. It drives me nuts. It sits here and my microphone keeps shaking. There we go. I get very animated when I talk and every time I do that and it shakes, it bugs me out. All right. That was what I wanted when I, you know, from a very young age, I wanted to feel sexy and I wanted to feel womanly and not like a boy. I was already like a tomboy because I was really good at sports. So that's all I enjoyed doing. And, you know, I had nicknames growing up, like the boys had a bunch of nicknames for me. And that was always a source of, you know, I laughed it off, but I inside, I was like, God, why why don't they look at me like they do the other girls, like the cheerleaders, like the girly girls who already have boobs and I don't. And so long story short, well, I'll never make a long story short. We know that (laughs) my mid twenties, I decided to get breast implants and it's funny, even back then, like I was aware of the risks I knew and I just didn't care. You know, when you're in your twenties and you're young, you don't care. And I was like, just, you know, the doctor sits you down and says, this is what could happen. This is, you know, you'll need to get them redone at some point, probably every 10 to 15 years. I was like, okay, great. Put them in. So got them in. I mean, they were like, they were like stripper tits. (laughs) They were like stripper tits. They were like big and up here. And like, I loved them so much. And I felt so, I felt instantly better about myself. And I got, I mean, I could wear like tank tops with no bra and maybe this is TMI, but no. Anyway, I enjoyed them to say the least. And 
so I had them for, I mean, I didn't have them very long before I started having kids, I guess. I had a couple years, a couple years, that was it. So then when I started having kids, you know, I was unable to breastfeed either of my kids. Like I did not produce, it didn't happen. It was agonizing. It was, and I remember, I remember at the time wondering if it was because I had implants, I didn't know. And they say, obviously like that can affect it, but I didn't know. I, I just really was like, it was so frustrating not being able to breastfeed. I'll say like, that was the first kind of like, if this is related to my implants, like I already regret them. Um, I don't know, like breastfeeding is hard enough if it works fine and you don't have problems, like it's a full-time job, but like not producing is terrible. And I just remember like sitting there, like pumping and pumping and pumping and pumping and pumping and nothing would come out. Um, and then you agonize over whether or not to feed your baby formula. They think, I mean, you think that it's like acid that you're feeding them. You just want to breastfeed them. Anyway, that was terrible. So I was unable to breastfeed both of my kids. Um, again, I don't know if it's related or not to my implants, but uh, so then, you know, I never really noticed any symptoms, so to speak. I never really had anything that I was aware of until like, and now I still, I'm still like trying to backtrack in my mind. Five, four years ago, I'm just, that's just a guess. I noticed some, I noticed like quite a few symptoms start two years ago. So, and I mean, oh God, I, I, I've said that I'm going to be like completely and utterly transparent with this. And it's hard, you guys, this is still really hard. Like I don't, there's things that are difficult for me to share, but I'm going to do it because I said I was going to do this on the podcast. So anyway, I, a couple years ago, I, we were, me and my husband were being intimate and he, I remember he fell like on top of my chest and I remember specifically it was my left one and it hurt. Like it hurt it, it I was like immediately like oh my god I think you popped my implant like and it freaked me out so much that's how like it was bad <laughs> and I was like oh god oh god what it, and then immediately I'm like okay it's okay it's all right it's I think it I don't think it popped and I don't think it did but it, it I still am like wondering if something happened because for the past couple of years I have had compounding symptoms and nothing has anything to do with the next. And they just keep getting bigger and bigger and bigger and worse. Um, the first one that I noticed was fatigue. And at the time, and this is going to be a whole different episode, but like I've talked openly a little bit, I'm saving most of it for my second book, which I'm going to talk about it here in the podcast too. Um, but I, you know, was taking supplements at the time that were not the greatest for me. Again, I will go into depth on an entirely other episode regarding that experience. I assumed, and it still may be related to that. I don't know, but like the fatigue, it hit me. And I, you know, I used to go to the gym like seven days a week. I never had a problem. I would work out every day, every single day, sometimes twice a day. And it always made me feel great. Like I, that is where I, that's kind of where I channeled that OCD of like obsessing about food. I turned it into obsessing about working out, which wasn't great. Like I still needed to find a balance, but working out made me feel alive. Like I, it was for being someone who's very anxious. It was a release. Like I could go and release anxiety. Like quite literally I would go and be stressed out and then I would work out and leave and feel fucking great. Like light, like I had dropped all that shit at the gym and left it there. Um, so working out became like my sanity. It was my sanity. So, you know, I started taking unnecessary supplements and I started experiencing like dramatic fatigue to the point where I'd have to take off work. This was before I was doing community with Caroline. I had a different job and I would have to take an entire day off of work to literally lay in bed. Like my body wouldn't do anything. And 
when I stopped taking those supplements, I assumed that would go away and that I would get my energy back. Well, it didn't. My adrenals were in the fucking gutter for like a year and a half. You know, I went and had my hormones checked. They were trashed. Everything, I had trashed everything. And again, like I will reiterate in, an another, in another episode, the importance of not doing stupid shit like I did. And I will tell you way more about it and the whole thing. But like, this is why. So anyway, I went and had all my stuff checked. My doctor was like, yeah, your adrenals are like in the fucking trash. Um, it's gonna take a long time to get them back to normal. This is not gonna be like three weeks, you'll be fine. It's gonna be like a year and a half. And I was like, great. So I still tried to work out, just fought. I fought tooth and nail through exhaustion to try to get workouts in. And every time I would work out, I'd feel worse and worse and worse. It never, like it went from being something that made me feel great to being something that made me feel like complete shit. And slowly but surely, and this took you guys, this has been almost three years now and nothing, it's not gotten better at all, which is why I'm sitting here talking to you about all this, because I'm starting to really think that the, it's a lot of this is related to my breast implants. After speaking to like a hundred women over the past five days and comparing symptoms, I'm comparing symptoms with women who currently have them and are debating on whether or not to take them out because they're dealing with these symptoms. And I've also talked to women who have already had them explanted and they've said, yeah, I had this, this, and this, and they're gone. Like, I mean, literally woke up and was able to take a full breath. That's another, like, that's one of the other really top symptoms that I have found that women deal with, with breast implants is they say they're short of breath. I'm short of breath all the time all the time. That's something I've had for since I had them. And I don't ever remember having it before I had them in, which, you know, that was like over 10, they're 12 years old. So like, I don't ever remember being short of breath <laughs> until I had them in. Never really paid attention to it. Um, but I mean, they're sitting on top of your lungs. So you do the math. Um, that's, I'm going to, I'm going to list all the, all of my symptoms too. I'm not holding any of my symptoms back from you guys. It's like shortness of breath, um, fatigue, extreme fatigue. It's not getting better. It's not getting better at all. It's not getting better at all. Like no matter what I do, like I have been unable to lift weights hardly at all here recently. Like I'll go lift. I'm, I'm exhausted for like three days. I feel like I have the flu. Um, I've had this ear pain, like my, like my ear feels full for about a year and a half. Went to an ENT. He was like, nothing is wrong with your ear. It's fine. Like your ear looks great. I was like, okay. And he was like, let's do an audiology test just to make sure. So we did an audiology test. Ear's fine. She's like, you hear better than like 97% of people that come in here. I'm like, something is wrong with my ear. I'm not crazy. Like I'm not a hypochondriac and I'm not crazy. But I mean, you go to these doctors and these specialists and you feel crazy because they're like, nothing's wrong. I'm like, but I'm not making this up. I swear to God, I'm not making this up. So I've had this weird ear, like it just feels like it's full of wax almost. And it's not, <laughs> that's a symptom. And I've, I've, I've read that ear pain <laughs> is a symptom of breast implant illness. Um, I'm trying to keep my shit straight. I should have printed out the list. I've been unable to empty my bladder fully. This, I don't know if this is related or not, but that is something I've been dealing with. Again, like you guys are getting all of this. <laughs> I'm sure that some men are listening to this and they're like, this is really great. I just, I'm not logging on to hear about her bladder <laughs> issues, but this is, this is what I've been dealing with. And this is why I want to bring it to the forefront. Um, again, I don't know if that is related or not, but that's part of what has been going on. Um, 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 headaches, random nausea out of nowhere. That's like not explainable. It's like not from anything I ate. It's not really like any nausea I've ever felt before. And then it just kind of goes away. Um, I've read that that's also a symptom and other women have told me they've dealt with it. Um, joint pain. I have had more joint pain in the past eight months than I've had in my entire life. I've never had, I've never had joint pain. Like I, I would have it if I really overextended myself at the gym and like lifted really heavy, but it would always go away. This is all the time. <laughs> and it's mainly in my knees. Um, my elbows, I've noticed it in my elbows. Um, 
but it doesn't go away. And like, even now that I'm not training and I'm resting, it's still not going away. It seems to be getting worse. So joint pain, inflammation, my inflammation has been bad for the past probably five years. And I've read that that's also a symptom, headaches. Um, I've had like a really weird throat clearing thing. It's odd, it started two years ago and I, it, it's bothersome now at night. It's like quite literally very disruptive. I will lay down at night and I mean, part of this might be sinus stuff, but I've heard you can also, like I've heard chronic sinus crap is, now he's calling me. I've heard chronic sinus stuff is also a symptom. It's difficult to swallow. And I've even read that there, like I read somewhere the other day, one of the girls tagged me and it was like, like the feeling sensation that you're choking. And I've had that like a couple times and it is fucking frightening. It's happened probably three times and I'll be laying in bed and I find that it's like, I'm having difficulty swallowing. And then out of nowhere, I'm like, why can't I swallow? It's weird. It's so it's so weird. And so you guys, I'm saying, I'm sitting here listing all these things because you'll have this stuff. And it's like, one thing has nothing to do with the next and nothing's adding up. And you go to the doctor and you go to the specialist and they're like, no, nothing's wrong. Visibly, I don't see anything wrong. And you think you're crazy. But now that I'm like me making that post the other day and talking to these women, like, and I've seen now like women who have had them removed and there's blood in the implant and there's no puncture. Like it's just fucking scary. And this, I'm just, this is, this is my journey. I have decided to do it. This is why I'm talking about it. I want to shed light on a subject that I think not a lot of people, I think people are starting to talk about this. It was not talked about 10 years ago. I think people are talking about it now. And I think, you know, now I'm almost 40. So a lot of my friends have implants. We all got them at the same time back when everybody was getting them. And now a lot of women are coming out and sharing their story about this on Instagram. I saw a girl the other day, one of my, one of the girls messaged me and sent me this post and this girl was holding her implants up and there was blood in both of them. And it's just, you think about it. Like I'm, like I said, I'm almost 40. I have two kids. I think about this very differently now. And so I'm going to go through what just happened and what brought me to the decision to do the explant because it was not an easy decision. I had been grappling with this for like two years. I, I started noticing friends getting theirs explanted about two years ago. And I would reach out and just say, Hey, Why'd you decide to get them taken out? How are you dealing with it? What were your symptoms? And it was, it, it was scary to like see a bunch of symptoms that they listed. Those were things I was already starting to be dealing with, but I ignored it. And I shoved all those feelings under the rug. I'm like, no, it's, you're different. You don't have these symptoms. It's not real. And so a couple months ago, you know, I, I, we had been talking about this, my husband and I, because they're coming up on being 12 years old. I need to do something with them. And I was like, well, I'll just get them redone. I'll get new implants. You know, I'll get silicone. I have saline currently. And so saline is like obviously water, salt, and you have like the, you get the ripples under <laughs> in your under boob. You ladies with implants know what I'm talking about, the ripples. And you know, after breastfeeding, like they're even worse. Like they don't look like they did before. So I made an appointment, went for my consult. I had a really terrible gut feeling the entire time I was at my consult and I ignored it the whole time. I was like, shush, be quiet. Don't, you know, that's my intuition literally talking to me. And I'll get into like the whole point of listening to your intuition on another episode. Cause it's, I could go on for that for hours about that. Um, I ignored it the entire time. And I, I picked out my boobs. I picked like the top of the line silicone, you know, and, and again, I was like terrified to get silicone implants. I was terrified, but I was booked it anyway. It didn't stop me. Paid for the surgery, went to my pre-op. So I was like seven days out from my surgery. And I went in and, you know, I told the nurse, I said, I'm really scared. And she's like, well, why are you scared? And I said, well, I, I'm scared to go from saline to silicone. Like, you know, and they were telling me like, the newer implants, they're better. They're, you know, they're made better. They're thicker of a shell. It's less likelihood that they're going to like crack and leak into you, but it still doesn't like silence that like intuition of like fear. And again, I'm at a completely different place in my life. I have kids. I don't, 
I don't want to risk that. It's not worth it to me at this point. So then I start in my head, I'm, I'm just grappling. You know, my husband just thinks that she wants, we're getting her boobs replaced and she's already booked the surgery. She's paid for it. She's gone to her pre-op. Great. So I go home that night and I'm like doing dishes. And I'm like, what if I just got my boobs taken out? Literally just like, just to see what he would say. Now, this is something I had already been thinking about for a while now, but I had not expressed that to him. So you can understand like, hang on. You can understand coming from his point of view, he is like, what the fuck are you talking about? Like, where is this coming from? So he's like, what? Why are you, what? Where is this coming? Like you've paid for surgery. You're going in in like six days to have this done. And now you want them like completely out? I'm like, oh, I don't know. I said, I'm like 50% and I called my sister and I was like, I'm 50% want them done, 50% want them out. Like, I don't know what I want right now, but I don't, I do know that I don't know that I want them in. So, you know, my, of course my sister did not want me to have them in. So she was like, just like cancel the surgery. Like you don't have to decide what you want right now, but just cancel the surgery. You know that you're not fully wanting them. So I canceled the surgery, like deep in my gut, I knew that's what I needed to do. And I was like, I'll just give myself time to figure out what I want, what really what I want to have done. And so I canceled it um, and just kind of let everything happen. So like, I was still thinking about it, not really sure. Well, then one of my girlfriends that I know really, really well got hers taken out. And she like posted about it on Facebook. And I remember when I saw that, I was like, that's my sign. I don't know what it was. I can't explain it, but I reached out to her. We started talking. She was like, if you're gonna get them explanted, like go to this particular person because they specialize in explanting and getting all the capsule out, which is very important. If you're gonna get your breast implants removed, you want it capsule, like the full, it's called an in block or something where they remove everything is what you want. So I um, set up a consultation went in and I was like, at that point, like I was ready. Like I knew I just want them. Out. I knew I wanted them out. And again, you guys, I wasn't really paying attention closely to all these symptoms. I just thought that these were things I would have to deal with now. Like it, you start to just wrap your head around, this is how life is going to be for me. I've got these symptoms. They're pretty disruptive at this point, but it must just be what my life is. Like you just really like accept it. And when I made the post the other day, it was last week about I've made the decision to explant like and all these women I've been speaking with now, it has not only like reaffirmed my decision to do it. But of course, I've said I'm documenting my entire journey, which means, you know, I'm sitting here doing a podcast episode about it. I'm going to be talking even more about it after I get them out. I'm going to document the entire journey of getting them replaced. And I'm going to be updating you guys on, you know, what of my symptoms go away. Like I I'm hoping all of them do what I have heard from a hundred percent of women who have had them taken out, have said every symptom I had went away when I got them out. So I'm going off of that. I'm going off of speaking and speaking with these women intimately, having these private conversations and they are confiding in me, these things that you're struggling with, I did too. And when I got them out, they went away. So that's what I'm going off of. Um, and I wanna really shed light on this because it's still not like, like breast implant illness. There's still a lot of people who are like, oh, that's not real. And I guess you can only speak about it if you have implants and have had them removed, or even if you haven't had them removed and you're dealing with this shit. And it's really frustrating to not, to feel like people don't believe you. That's probably the most frustrating feeling ever. So it's really nice to have these women that I can confide in now and be like, yeah, this is, this really sucks. I've had this and this and this and this, this hair loss. I forgot to mention hair loss. I've never had that issue. And I started noticing that four months ago, and I've never had that, <laughs> ever. My hair has always been super thick. So one of the main things I've heard from most of my friends who I know personally, who've had them taken out, they've said, I literally woke up and felt like a different person from surgery, like immediately. Like I woke up and like was able to breathe fully. So that's inspiring to me. That's what I'm doing this for. I'm doing it for my health. Um, 
I, I really had to get over that hump of like, oh my God, I'm gonna be flat as fuck. I'm gonna be flat as a board. Like I'm, not, I'm gonna have no boobs. Like I don't care anymore. Like I really, I cared for a long time. That's why I wanted the surgery. I wanted it redone and I don't care anymore. I'm ready to be flat chested. I don't give a fuck. My husband doesn't care. I don't care. Like I want my health to improve. And essentially when you have a foreign object in your body, like your body, everybody's body is different, but I feel like your body is probably going to try to get that, do everything it can to fight against that because it's a foreign object in your body. It's like a bullet or a pacemaker. That's what my microsurgeon even told me the other day. So anyway, I feel like I've rambled long enough about this. Um, I have my surgery scheduled for October 12th. I literally messaged them this morning and I was like, Hey, can I move my surgery up? <laughs> And she said, well, we're booked right now, but if any cancellations happen, we will let you know, like first and foremost, I said, okay. So that was a bummer. I was hoping that they would have already had a cancellation, but right now I just have to wait and it sucks, but I'm going to get them taken out and I'm going to document the entire process for you guys. And I'll be talking more about it. Once we get closer, I'll be talking. I mean, I'm going to take you through every step of the way. Um, so that's it. That's it for episode four. Um, if you guys have any questions, please reach out to me. Um, I always put all of my links, uh, my little link tree thing in the show notes. So you can click that and go to, you know, my website, um, join our Facebook group. You can go to my Facebook, my Instagram. I talk a lot about everything on my Instagram, my Instagram stories. Um, my book is on Amazon. You can, I have the link to that too. But anyway, now I'm like, ridiculously rambling. Okay. I'm going to wrap it up that that's it for today. I am going to go right into shooting episode five because my production guy is going to be on vacation. So I'm trying to like, boom, 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 get the shit done. So we can have a bunch of episodes ready. And if I get in early on oh my, I'm crossing my fingers right now. For those of you who are not watching the video and listening to the podcast episode, I am crossing my fingers. Like if I can get my surgery moved up, that would be fucking amazing. And then talk more and tell you guys like on the other side, once I get on the other side of this and I can tell you like what symptoms went away and how I feel, I really think that that's going to be like the catalyst of just sharing with you guys what the aftermath of it is like. Um, and not really holding anything back. Um, that way, just, I hope that it helps at least one of you, whether or not you're deciding on if you want, maybe want them in. I've actually had girls reach out to me and say, God, I was wanting implants and now I don't know if I am. And I'm like, totally your decision. But if I were speaking on my own behalf, I would not. <laughs> Again, that's just my opinion. Anyway, um, that's it. I am totes rambling. All right, I will um, talk to you guys. I'll see you in episode five. Thank you for checking out the CWC podcast. If you want to learn more about our community, make sure to check out the show notes.